Hyperpigmentation is a really common skin concern and it can be so tricky to treat because pigmentation is stubborn. So I'm going to share with you some of my favorite ingredients and skincare products that you can use at home to help with hyperpigmentation. If you're new, I'm Dr. Sam Ellis and I'm a board certified dermatologist. I'm here to help you understand your skin and to find products that work for you. If that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Before we get into the treatments for hyperpigmentation, let's spend a minute talking about what hyperpigmentation actually is and what causes it. Hyperpigmentation generally refers to the abnormal or irregular overproduction of pigment in the skin that results in skin darkening. And the pigment that is overproduced is melanin. Melanin is what gives all of our skin color and we all have a different amount of baseline melanin. And when that melanin production is revved up and deposited in the skin, we get hyperpigmentation. Now, the causes of hyperpigmentation are incredibly broad and far-reaching. Some of them include medications, certain medical conditions, pregnancy or other shifts in your hormones, sun and sun damage, of course, allergies and inflammation. So the cause of hyperpigmentation can be kind of tricky to figure out from person to person and everyone's trigger might be a little bit different, but I'll kind of talk you through some of the most common types of hyperpigmentation that I see in my practice and that a lot of people ask me about. By far and away, the most common type of hyperpigmentation I see is post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or PIH is exactly what it sounds like. Excess pigment in the skin after the skin has been inflamed. And some of the most common inflammatory triggers of PIH are things like acne, bug bites, and little scrapes. So if you've ever had an acne mark that maybe you picked or even didn't pick, and then a few days later that acne bump has resolved but it has left a dark mark in its place, that's PIH. Another common cause of hyperpigmentation is melasma. And melasma is sort of the symmetrical distribution of hyperpigmented or darker patches on the face, like the upper lip, the cheeks, the forehead. It can also happen on the arms. It definitely affects women way more than it affects men. And actually, if you want a video on melasma, let me know because I could talk about it forever, but definitely a common cause of hyperpigmentation. And then one thing that I wouldn't technically file under the category of hyperpigmentation, but is often discussed when hyperpigmentation is brought up are sunspots, also known as solar lentigines or sun freckles. Sometimes they're called liver spots, even though they have absolutely nothing to do with your liver, but these are essentially just brown patches or little growths on the skin that show up in sun exposed areas over your lifetime. This all being said, there are still many, many more types of hyperpigmentation. So if you're noticing darkening on your skin and it doesn't seem to fall into any of the categories that I just brought up, it might be a good idea to check in with a dermatologist to make sure you're on the right track for treatment before you begin any interventions. Now. When it comes to treating hyperpigmentation, the real strategy here is to pick ingredients or products with ingredients that disrupt the pathway of melanin distribution and production within the skin. So you need to either disrupt some type of enzyme that creates the pigment or disrupt some mechanism that distributes that pigment throughout the skin in order to improve hyperpigmentation. Another thing to keep in mind is that hyperpigmentation is notoriously tricky to treat. Pigmentation is just super stubborn. So oftentimes you need multiple effective ingredients ingredients used for a long period of time consistently to see improvement. It's also important to note that not all hyperpigmentation is going to be amenable to improvement with just at-home skincare. Sometimes you need chemical peels or lasers or other technologies to intervene to see a big improvement. And the last thing I want to note, and I'm not saying this to be negative or discouraging, but as a dermatologist, I think it's very important for me to convey the fact that not all hyperpigmentation can be completely eliminated. There are some forms of hyperpigmentation that are so stubborn and we just don't have the technology yet to completely get rid of it on some people's skin. All right, I think I've covered all my bases now, so let's get into treatment and the products I recommend. Let's start off with the category of antioxidants because these play both a preventative role in hyperpigmentation as well as a treatment role. The main purpose of antioxidants is to protect our skin. They work by neutralizing a damaging molecule that shows up in our skin called oxygen-free radicals, and those oxygen-free radicals can be generated from environmental aggressors like pollution and excessive UV light, as well as our normal cellular metabolic functions. Now, in addition to protecting our skin, some antioxidants have a proven capability to interfere with that melanin pathway and actually prevent or reverse signs of hyperpigmentation. And the two main antioxidants that have proven to do this consistently are vitamin C and niacinamide. When it comes to vitamin C and addressing hyperpigmentation, one of my absolute favorite products is the SkinCeuticals Floritin CF. 
Actually, it's not just one of my favorites. It's definitely like a cult favorite among my patients because it really is effective. Now, I would never suggest using vitamin C alone to treat your hyperpigmentation, but it should be included in a hyperpigmentation treatment regimen. The Floritin CF is a super lightweight serum, almost watery, like in the best way, because it's very easy to layer with other products. And then in addition to having the 10% L-ascorbic acid or 10% vitamin C to fight hyperpigmentation, it also has Floritin, which helps with hyperpigmentation as well as cell turnover, and then ferulic acid, which stabilizes the entire formulation so that it remains effective. Vitamin C is a staple in my skincare routine, and I love the SkinCeuticals formulation so much, and they will always hold a special place in my heart, and I will repurchase them over and over and over again. But I often get asked like, hey, can you recommend a vitamin C serum that isn't so spendy? So I will. I think a really affordable vitamin C is the Timeless 20% Vitamin C Ferulic Acid Serum. This has 20% L-ascorbic acid, which is amazing if your skin can tolerate that level of ascorbic acid, but not everyone's will be able to, and it has ferulic acid. So again, this serum has a lot of potential. It has powerhouse ingredients in it. It always is going to come down to what works with you and your skin and your needs. Now let's talk about niacinamide. This antioxidant is already included in so many different types of skincare products, whether it's moisturizers or cleansers or sunscreens or other anti-aging products. And so rather than having a specific step in your skincare just to introduce niacinamide, I suggest finding a product that meets another need of yours that happens to also have niacinamide in it. For example, the Elta MD UV Clear Sunscreen, which is one of my all-time favorite sunscreens, also has niacinamide in it. So when you're using that, you're not only getting sun protection, but you're also getting niacinamide into your routine. So two birds, one stone. I also love the Elastin Restorative Skin Complex. This is absolutely an investment, but if you have more mature skin or you're trying to do the most for anti-aging with your skin, this is a high-tech skin product that really has the technology as well as the clinical data to support it and it has niacinamide in it. So you get this amazing anti-aging topical that also helps fight hyperpigmentation. Okay, let's talk about another skincare product to fight hyperpigmentation. And I was going to leave this to the end of the video, but I had to move it up to now because you cannot go through this video, a video on hyperpigmentation, without thinking about sunscreen and sun protection. If you take nothing else away from watching this, I need you to remember and focus on the importance of sunscreen and sun protection when fighting hyperpigmentation. Do not even bother doing other hyperpigmentation interventions if you're not going to wear sunscreen and protect your skin from the sun because Without that, all of your hyperpigmentation is coming right back. Hyperpigmentation conditions tend to be exquisitely sensitive to UV light, which is why the sunscreens I recommend for people who have hyperpigmentation are SPF 50 or higher. I also tend to recommend tinted sunscreens. And the reason I recommend tinted sunscreens is because blue light, which falls within the visible light spectrum, can exacerbate hyperpigmentation. And we know that tinted sunscreens can block blue light. So you don't just wanna have sunscreens screen to block UV light, block that blue light too for the maximum potential improvement. I have an entire YouTube video dedicated to my favorite tinted SPF, so you should definitely check that out if you're looking for a recommendation. Recently, I've been reaching for the SkinCeuticals Sheer UV Defense. I think that's what it's called, and I don't think I have it in that YouTube video, but I really like that it is a super liquidy, lightweight sunscreen, and I also love the tint on it. It's not too orangey or warm, so it tends to match my skin tone better, especially if I don't have a fake tan. Okay, I said my piece about sunscreen. <laughs> Let's move on to other ingredients and products that help fight hyperpigmentation. One thing I love about being a dermatologist and being in the skincare and cosmetic chemistry space is just how much innovation there is. So I'm going to focus on some very specific pigment fighters here that have been in the game for a long time and have a long track record of proven efficacy, but I'm so excited to see what continues to come down the pipeline and what continues to be developed that will also help us fight hyperpigmentation. So maybe stay tuned for an updated video in a little while. First up is hydroquinone. Now in the US, this is only available via prescription and it is the gold standard pigment fighter. Hydroquinone comes in various concentrations. Usually it starts around 2%, but you can have 4%, 6%, 8%, 16% hydroquinone. And oftentimes it is also formulated with other pigment fighting ingredients. Again, because we talked about this, hyperpigmentation is stubborn and the more effective ingredients you're using together, generally the better. There are a few caveats that come with using hydroquinone. One, you need a prescription, so sometimes it's an access issue. Two, higher percentages of hydroquinone generally are more effective, but they can also be more irritating on the skin, which can become problematic. 
Three, hydroquinone is not recommended for use if you are trying to conceive, are pregnant, or are breastfeeding. So there's a huge population of women who aren't able to use hydroquinone for some period of their life. And four, we generally don't recommend continuous use of hydroquinone. Typically, dermatologists will recommend that you use hydroquinone for three to six months and then take a break from it. And so you also are going to want to have access to other pigment fighting ingredients and products in between your hydroquinone usage or instead of using hydroquinone altogether. My next skincare category for fighting hyperpigmentation is retinoids. I don't even know how many videos on retinoids I've published at this point because they have so many benefits. They are collagen stimulatory. They are anti-aging in other ways. They help with hyperpigmentation, et cetera, et cetera. So they should kind of be in everyone's skincare routine in my personal opinion. But I think retinoids have a huge place in fighting hyperpigmentation and they have consistently shown to reverse hyperpigmentation. As a reminder, there are multiple different ingredients that fall under the category of retinoids. And all of these are vitamin A derived molecules, things like retinols and retinaldehydes, which you can get over the counter, as well as prescription strength retinoids like tretinoin. When it comes to treating hyperpigmentation with a retinoid, they're by far and away the most data for using a prescription strength topical retinoid, specifically tretinoin. However, not everyone's skin can tolerate tretinoin and maybe it will be able to tolerate tretinoin one day, but you have to start with a more gentle retinoid to start. And that's where things like adapalene and retinol and retinaldehyde come into play. These are forms of retinoids that you can access kind of over the counter, if you will. And you can start by getting your skin used to that before moving on to prescription prescription strength. One of my favorite beginner retinoid products is by Stradia and it's called Night Shift. I've talked about this product several times before and it's just you know, I like what I like. Uh, and this product is just so creamy. It has encapsulated retinol, so it is a very gentle formulation that is still effective. And I think it's a great way to get your skin used to a retinoid product. If you want something with a little more oomph, but maybe it's not like as sexy of a product, I definitely recommend Differin or Adapalene 0.1% gel, which you can get at most local drugstores. This product is really marketed to and meant for people struggling with acne, but we know that Adapalene also helps with hyperpigmentation. So you can use it for whatever suits your particular skin needs. All right, next ingredient category, alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids. Alpha hydroxy acids are things like glycolic acid, lactic acid, mandelic acid, and beta hydroxy acids are typically referring to salicylic acids. And in my practice, I will use glycolic acid chemical peels or mandelic acid chemical peels or salicylic acid chemical peels to help fight hyperpigmentation, but you can get good, strong alpha hydroxy acid and beta hydroxy acid formulations over the counter too that can also improve your pigment. First up is the Paula's Choice Skin Perfecting 25% AHA, 2% BHA Exfoliating Peel. This is a powerful product, so I would not recommend using this more than once a week, and I feel like it has the most potential to benefit people with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Like if you had a lot of acne and now you have dark marks left behind, this is the one to go to. I know a lot of people are going to ask me to compare this to The Ordinary, which has a very similar product, but I like this one better. I just like the blend of AHAs and I feel like it's more cosmetically elegant to use on the skin. And then a couple other of my go-to AHA exfoliating products that I love for hyperpigmentation, and I've talked about these before, are the Sunday Riley Good Jeans AHA exfoliating products. They have one with lactic acid that's so gentle and I just love it for people with sensitive skin who struggle with hyperpigmentation and just overall skin texture. And then they have one with glycolic acid where I usually recommend going to the glycolic acid if you've used the lactic acid regularly and you're looking for something with a little more oomph. I do want to take a second to shout out body hyperpigmentation because I get so many questions about this, not only post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from bug bites or scrapes on the legs or arms, but also just excess pigmentation in the groin folds and in the armpits or on the elbows and knees. And a lot of this is physiologic, meaning that it's so normal to have darker armpits and groin and elbows and knees, especially if you have a darker baseline skin tone. But I also understand the want to lighten that up a little bit. So the next couple products will be about that. The Glytone Exfoliating Body Lotion, which has glycolic acid in it, is one of my all-time favorite body lotions. I just think everyone should use glycolic acid in their body lotion. Not only does it help with hyperpigmentation, but it can help with crepey skin and irregular skin texture and just smooths everything out. And this is one of my absolute favorite glycolic acid lotions. But remember, keep in mind, if you're using an alpha hydroxy acid on your body skin, you also need to protect that skin from the sun because it is going to be more sun sensitive. So. Just one other thing, you don't wanna be doing all this work with your body lotion and then exposing your skin to the sun and worsening your hyperpigmentation overall. 
Another ingredient that can really help with hyperpigmentation is kojic acid. And I have a kojic acid body soap that I think is awesome. I guess you can use it on your face too, but I've only used it on my body because I feel like it's pretty powerful, but it's great again for if you have those little hyperpigmentation marks on your legs or arms, or you're working on lightening up your knees or elbows or groin or armpits, etc. It's the Koji Sand Facial Beauty Soap. I can't remember who recommended it to me, but it was a patient who had dealt with a lot of hyperpigmentation and she was like, you know what, Dr. Ellis, you know what finally helped me? And she named this body soap. So it is something that I recommend now to my patients who deal with hyperpigmentation and are looking for something to add into their arsenal to help with it. You'll also probably notice that a lot of pigment fighting products that use a variety of pigment fighters tend to include kojic acid because it, it plays nice with others. Moving on, I could not have a hyperpigmentation video without talking about azelaic acid. Azelaic acid is just another one of those ingredients that has multiple things that it helps with. It helps with acne, it helps with inflammation, it helps with rosacea, it's safe in pregnancy and in breastfeeding. So it's a wonderful ingredient to include in your overall skincare regimen for a variety of skin concerns, but it has particular efficacy in fighting hyperpigmentation. In the United States, you can get azelaic acid as a prescription in 15% and 20% concentrations, but you can also get azelaic acid in lower concentrations without a prescription. Hands down, in my opinion, one of the best azelaic acid products is the Glytone Enhanced Brightening Complex. This has a combination of azelaic acid and glycolic acid and is probably my most recommended product for people who are trying to conceive or who are pregnant or who are breastfeeding and are really worried about what's going to be in their skincare, but really want something that is effective, that's going to help with breakouts and pigmentation and skin texture. And this serum just kind of like does it all. It's wonderful. The next ingredient up is tranexamic acid. And in my practice, I actually prescribe oral tranexamic acid for the treatment of melasma, but it also is available in topical forms. Tranexamic acid used to be a more novel skincare ingredient, and it seemed that every product that had tranexamic acid in it was crazy, crazy expensive. But I love that Naturium has come up with a couple of different tranexamic acid products that don't break the bank. I particularly like the Naturium Multibright tranexamic acid serum. This does not just have tranexamic acid, but a couple other pigment fighters in there as well. It's just a really beautiful texture it layers well with other products and I think it's a very affordable way to bring topical tranexamic acid into a hyperpigmentation routine. Full disclosure, I am on the dermatology advisory board for Naturium, but I did not participate in the formulation of this product. Another pigment fighting ingredient that we often use in the dermatology office because it is prescription is cystiamine cream, also known as Cispera. This is a great pigment fighter, but it doesn't work for everyone. And the biggest turnoff about this product is that it doesn't smell very good, but it is effective for a lot of people in treating hyperpigmentation and for treating things like melasma. There are certainly other hyperpigmentation fighters out there, things like Arbutin and licorice root extract. And like I mentioned earlier on in this video, there are products or ingredients that are newer in the market that still need more clinical data to support them, but show a lot of promise. So as those become more popular, I'm going to do another hyperpigmentation video with all of that. What are some skincare products that have helped with your hyperpigmentation? Tell me in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.